Do you like it? No. What? what? This ain't the stuff I like. What do you mean? Good morning, my name is Kristen. I'm one of the pastors here at Mosaic. How y'all doing this morning? Awesome, awesome. Well, Merry Christmas. Yes, it's a good Sunday to be here. It's a great Sunday to be joining online because we are kicking off our Christmas series called I Like It. And it's all about gifts. It's all about gifts because Christmas sometimes feels like it's all about gifts, right? The gifts we're getting, the gifts we're giving, the gifts that we're buying, the gifts that we're opening that we maybe don't really like. And then we have to change our reaction from like, oh, thank you. I like it. <laughs> yes. So actually, we can, I know we can all relate to this, but I have a solution for you. Okay. I have a solution to getting gifts that you like and not getting gifts that you don't like, but it's a little controversial. It's a little controversial. We may divide people into two groups here, but we're going to do it anyway. All right. How many of you are Christmas list people? You're like, I will make a Christmas list. I will give you the list. You will buy from the list. How many of you are not raising your hands because you're like, that is so impersonal. It's not special. I want to buy what I want. I want to be thoughtful. Okay, we have a very divided crowd here. Okay, a very divided crowd. But here is the thing. I am a list person because I want what I want and I know what I need. So what is special is for you to just give me the thing that I tell you I want. Okay? So let me tell you what is on my Christmas list this year. When I open up this present, go with my family, here's what's on my Christmas list. It, Peter, my husband is over there raising his hand. It, guy, come on now. Jeez Louise. Let me try that again. You stole my punchline. Here is what I'm hoping is on my Christmas gift list this year, and it is actually a gift receipt. It's a gift receipt because all of you non-list people are going to do what you want, right? The list people are agreeing with me. I hope that what's in here is a gift receipt because then when I open it and I go, huh, I like it, I can also take it back, right? I can return it for something else. See, I think when it comes to God, we actually do the same thing. We give God a list. We tell him the things, hey, God, here's what I want, and here's what I need. And then we thank him for it, but we're still also comparing back to our list. So we may be like, hey, God, thank you for this job. Thank you for this job so that I can pay the bills, but like, you know, had it for a minute. Can I, can I do like a gift exchange here? <laughs> Thank you for this body. Thank you for this body that allows me to do all the things. It's not exactly as I outlined it, like on my wish list, but you know, thank you for that anyway. Thank you for this life. Thank you for these opportunities. Thank you for, you know, these, these feelings, all of the, these things that you gave me. Again, not exactly as I outlined them on my list, but like, I guess thanks. I guess I like it. And see, the problem with this mindset is that not only does it make us obnoxious people to buy for at Christmas, I know I am an obnoxious person to buy for, but it also affects the way we receive gifts. It affects the way we receive, and it makes receiving harder than it already is. Would you agree that sometimes it is hard to receive things? It is hard to receive things, right? It gives us this weird sense of like, if somebody gives you a present, even if it ends up being something that you do like, there's still that awkward moment of receiving it. Where you're like, I don't know what's gonna be in here, and now everybody's looking at me, and I feel kind of uncomfortable. It's like vulnerable in a weird way to receive something from somebody. And so the problem is that this mindset is bigger than just gifts. Not only is it hard to receive gifts, but then it goes into the rest of our lives. It's hard to receive care. It's hard to receive love and comfort and support from somebody when you're going through something, when it might just be easier to sit and wallow in our feelings. It's easier to, it's harder to receive that care. It's hard to receive help. And this could be in a large situation where maybe you actually need finances or you need something big and it's hard to receive the help that you need or it could just be in something small, your overwhelming to-do list and all of the things that you have to do. It makes it hard to receive. 
right now, some of you, I love that we are doing Tacky Christmas Sunday. So for those of you that are online, this room is filled with people in antlers and light up necklaces and like all kinds of things. It's a good thing I'm not an ADHD survivor or I would not be able to do this with all that is going on in this room right now. But for some of you, you're like, I'm not trying to be a Grinch. I'm just really not in the Christmas spirit. I'm having a really hard time receiving the magical sense of this spirit, receiving the Christmas season. And I don't think it's because you don't want to just play along and have fun. I think it's because we don't know how to receive. So this morning, there's a gift that God already gave you. A gift that God already gave you. And I want you to be able to leave here knowing how to receive it. Because what he gave you, you need. You need. You don't just want it, but it's something that you need. Whatever that problem is on your mind, that thing that's been weighing you down, it's the solution to that. Whatever that feeling is that you're feeling or that you've been feeling lately, you maybe can't even name it. You can't explain it to other people because they don't understand because you can't quite find the words to put around it. What he has for you is the answer to that feeling. It'll change that. We need to learn to receive what God has for us, what we need. Because if we're not careful, we will look right back at God and try to return the gift that he gave us. Because we think that we know better than anybody else what it is that we want and need. And that applies to God as well. We need to receive God's gift to us. Spoiler alert, it's Jesus. <laughs> it's Jesus. You guys are like, seriously, really? It's Jesus? Of course it's Jesus. It's Christmas. This is a Christmas series. Like what else would it be besides Jesus, right? But I think that's our response because again, I don't know that we've fully understood how to receive Jesus. At least not the particular, past our particular kind of Jesus. You maybe have uh, accepted or received your one brand of Jesus, your one kind of Jesus. See if any of these relate to you. See, some of you know him. Some of you know Jesus, and, or at least a version of him that you've seen from other people or that you've heard other people kind of put out there. So you've got this religious Jesus. And to be honest, you actually don't like him. You don't like this Jesus. You want nothing to do with him. So you're like, you want me to receive Jesus? No, thank you. You're right. I haven't received Jesus because I am not interested. I am not interested. Others of us don't know him. You're, you want to know Jesus? You're like, I think I kind of have an idea of what he is and what's going on, but it's more of like a storybook Bible Jesus. You know that he's supposed to have all the answers and do all of these things. But you're like, how can a guy be a combination of like heaven and humanity? How can he be part God and part person? It doesn't really make sense. So you maybe know of him, you think you know him, but you don't know him personally. Storybook kind of Jesus. Or maybe you have the, he lives in my heart, Jesus. Anybody as a kid went to church camp, Sunday school, had that moment where you ask Jesus into, his, into your heart, you just like tuck him in there, right? At night, you're like, good night, good night in my heart, Jesus. That's the kind of Jesus that some of us have received. And the problem is that when we did that, we checked it off the list, received Jesus, done. And because we then were told that we have received Jesus, we never had to lean into what it actually means to receive Jesus. Jesus. So let's go to the Christmas story. Let's look at this gift that God gave us so we can learn how to receive him. In Luke 2, the angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town, a savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. So God looked down at a broken, hurting world. God looked down at people who had been promised a savior. And then he seemed to have gone silent. He like made this promise to them, something is coming, hold on to hope. And then he seemed to go silent. And he broke that silence with a baby. 
And I can only imagine the people that were there when that baby was born going, I like it. Like a, a baby? You sent us a baby? Really? Like all of these things, all of these needs that we have, all of these problems, you, you sent us a baby. Okay, cool. Yes, there was prophecy. Yes, there were things. They knew that a baby was coming, that something was coming, but I can't, I can only imagine being there in that moment and going like, huh, that's going to take a minute. It's going to take a minute for this to actually be something that can help us to fulfill my needs. Like maybe you could have sent like a ruler, God, I don't know. Like somebody like big and strong with a lot of muscles and like armies and guys that could fight for us. That would have been cool. That would have been helpful to have right now. Maybe you could have sent Jeff Bezos. Like he could have come now with all of his money to buy whatever it is that we need. That would be helpful. That feels like a solution. Or at least, and I know parents can relate to this, at least an instruction manual would have been good, right? If you're going to send us a baby that can't even talk, who can't give us answers, you could have sent some papers, you could have sent like even a pamphlet, like something small, just to help us understand what to do or to prove to the rest of the world who's going to think we are crazy that this baby is who you said he is. But this is our savior, a baby. Okay, I like it. <laughs> See, here's the thing about getting gifts from God. It's not a white elephant gift exchange, but we think it is. Have you ever been to a white elephant gift exchange? Sometimes they're called Dirty Santa, I think. So what happens is, in case you haven't, everybody brings a gift and it's all wrapped and you put it in a pile. And the first person gets a gift and then they open it. It's usually something ridiculous or silly or funny, okay? The second person and every other person after that has a choice. They can either go back to the pile and open a present or they can take something from somebody else. They can look around and go, oh, I actually like what you have and I'm gonna take that instead. Hijinks ensue and by the end of the night, most people are happy. I guarantee you one person goes home feeling like they've been robbed because their <laughs> gift got stolen multiple, multiple times. And that's what we think receiving gifts is supposed to be even with God. Even with God, we look around at all the world has to offer, at all of the things that are there, and we compare it to what we've been given. And we say, I want that. I want hers. I like yours better. And then we take it. We take it. We're like, I'm going to take your opportunity. I'm going to take your idea. I'm going to take your people. I'm going to take your stuff. And then we take these things from other people because we compared it to what we had. And then we go, oh my gosh, look what I have. Look at this gift that God gave me. Isn't God so good to give me these things? Y'all, that's not how it works. We think receiving is choosing the best of what's available instead of keeping the gift that we have been given. God did not go to the to clearance aisle or like carelessly pick something out. He didn't get a baby because he's like, oh, somebody will think this is funny or like this is easier to make than a full grown person. Okay, God is not a lazy gift giver. God gave us a baby because he knew it was the only way he could enter our humanity. God is an intentional gift giver. So if he gave us a baby, it is because we needed that baby. We needed that baby. Go back to that verse in Luke again, please. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for who? Everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town. A savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you're to look for. A baby. A baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. Have y'all ever held a baby? Like a little newborn, tiny baby? It, oh my gosh, there is nothing like it. They're tiny and they're helpless and they're pure and they're innocent. We have no preconceived notions when it comes to babies. We have no judgment of them, of who they are or what they've done because they can't do anything. And we just hold them. Babies only require one thing of us, and that is to be received. 
Babies only require one thing, and that is to be received. There is a uniqueness to the presence of babies that is not present any other time in their life. Think about it this way. Have you ever seen those baby on board signs that people stick in their cars, right? Why do they put them in there? Why do they put a baby on board? It's not just an announcement. It's not just like, hey, guess what I got? I got a baby. They put it in there because they want you to see it. They want you to know that there is a baby in that car. Why? Because when you know that, they're hoping that you will behave differently, that you will drive more carefully, that you will not do harm to this baby because we behave differently when babies are in our presence. They want us to know that a baby has been received into their world so that we will respond accordingly. We give grace to babies in a very different way than we give grace to people. Very different way than we give grace to anybody else. When a baby wants to eat, we stop and we feed it. If you're at a restaurant, if you're at a park, if you're at the airport, it does not matter. This is, I mean, you see moms feeding their babies. There's bottles everywhere. When a baby wants to eat, you feed that baby then. When a baby wants to sleep, you stop what you are doing, you give up your plans, and you make sure that that baby has a place to sleep and to rest. When a baby wants to cry, it does. It does. And there's nobody there going, will you please get it together? You are being so dramatic, Kristen. <laughs> they don't do that. We just let babies lay on the floor and cry. I can't do that. Y'all would not give me that grace like we give, I know, trust me, like we give to a baby. There is a uniqueness to the presence of a baby. When we receive a baby, its presence changes the way we behave. It changes the world around it. And so maybe God knew that the only way we would stop and receive him was to come in a way where receiving him was the only option. Receiving him is the only option. This Christmas season, learning to receive the gifts that God has for you will come from first receiving baby Jesus. You need to receive baby Jesus. Not any other kind of Jesus, any other brand of Jesus. I want you to leave here today going, okay, got it. I have received baby Jesus. Dear, sweet, eight pound baby Jesus, who doesn't know any words yet. See, Mer Metallic Day, good night, people. You guys are the ones laughing. I couldn't help it. I took it out and I look, I just put it right back in. We need to receive baby Jesus. Not the savior that you listed out. Not the one that you think you want or you think you need. Not all of the solutions that you listed to your problems. Not that savior. Not the one that you think is going to be the solution, the answer, this brand. This is what you've been told. This is what Jesus is supposed to be. Here is the solution. This is Jesus at Christmas. This is Jesus at Easter. I need you to receive the savior as he was given to you. As a baby. Baby Jesus, who wants nothing more from you than to be received. Nothing more. Even the prophecy of, of Isaiah told us years before Jesus' birth that what we needed was a baby. In Isaiah 9, it says, For a child is born to us, a son is given. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We need this child. We need this baby because he will be everything that we need. He will fulfill every desire and every want that we have. The government will rest upon his shoulders. Why? Because he is what will sustain us. He is what we can put our trust in. He, this baby, this baby Jesus we're receiving will become a wonderful counselor. On the days that you think no one wants to listen to your problems, he will be the wonderful counselor. He will bring order to our dysfunction. 
This is why we go to therapy, right? We need a therapist. We need a counselor to help us understand and to process all of the things that are going on. You can have Jesus and a therapist, but you can take this to him. He can help you process and understand and figure things out. He can bring order to the dysfunction of your family. Have you ever noticed that babies can unite us? Babies bring people together like nothing else can. They can bring a family together that has been divided. A baby can unite us. And this baby will end strife where there has only been conflict. He will bring order to it. Where there has only been inflicted pain, a need to have the upper hand, a need to win over somebody else, he will be the counselor that can come in and bring order to it, to listen and to understand and to tell you all of your feelings are valid. When we collectively receive Jesus, it unites us. He will also be a mighty God. He will be the source of your strength. You know that need for control you have? He can be the answer to that. Not because he will give you the control, but because he is in control. And it will ease that a little bit. He will hold all things together in his power. He will also be the everlasting father. Not a father who will walk away. Not a father who is technically still present, but is very much distanced and removed from you. An everlasting father who is always there, who always cares for you, who wants to come alongside you so you never have to wonder if you are loved. An everlasting father so that when you feel overlooked or you feel abandoned or you feel excluded, you feel like you don't fit, his presence alone can comfort you the way only a father can. And he will be the prince of peace. He will bring calm to our chaos. So during the Christmas season, if you find yourself out there not finding the magic in it, not in the Christmas spirit, but really just feeling overwhelmed with all of the parties and all of the gifts and then teacher gifts and piano teacher gifts and babysitter gifts and bus driver gifts and mailman gifts and all of the gifts and going to all the parties and doing all of the things and all the performances and make sure you make gingerbread houses and make sure you decorate cookies and make sure you get an elf and make sure you set a reminder... I gotta stop it right there. Make sure you set a reminder, the elf. All of the things, when we get so overwhelmed with all of the things that the Christmas season can bring, the the Prince of Peace is the only one that can turn that chaos around and make this a season where we can find joy again. We can find joy again. A child is born to us, a baby whose body will be broken for us, whose blood will be shed for us because that is the purpose of his life. This tiny little baby, all he asks of us is that we will receive him. Will we receive him? What does it look like? That's the million dollar question, right? What does it look like? First, I think we have to lay down our expectations of the Jesus that we think we know. Whether it's storybook Bible Jesus, or it's like tucked away in my heart Jesus, or it's religious Jesus. He's the one that shows up the most on social media, I think. That version that other people show you that he is. We need to be able to move away from our brand or our kind of Jesus. Lay down the expectations of that kind of Jesus so that he can enter anew into our lives again. And it doesn't matter if you're receiving baby Jesus for the first time or if you have received him, checked him off the list when you were a child and you've known him forever. Jesus can come into your life in a way no one else can, especially at Christmas, and present himself anew again. He can change your world if we will receive him anew again. We also have to lay down 
all of the things, what it is that we think we want or that we need. Our list of ideas, our list of solutions, our list of that perfect person, our list for the people that are already in our lives of the way that we wish they were or the things that we, we wish they were doing. The list for our job, the list for our coworkers, the list for our future, the list for our purpose, all of the things that we take to God on the regular of like, if you could just listen this time and give me these things, we have to lay those down so that our hands aren't full of all of our dictated wants and needs so that we actually have room to receive him. And then we have to accept what it is that we've been given. We have to accept the gift that has been given to us. Just take him in and stop looking for something better. I am telling you, you can look throughout the world for the rest of your life. You will find temporary fulfillment. There will be things that pro make promises. They may even keep some of those promises, but there is nothing better than receiving Jesus. There is nothing that is going to solve your problems fully or be with you eternally like Jesus. We have to stop trying to force him to be something he's not, to be one way or another. We just have to open our arms and receive him. Jesus himself tells us in Matthew, he says, your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. He already knows. God doesn't need your list. And it doesn't mean you can't take things to him. I'm not telling you not to pray, hear me. But he doesn't need your list. He knows you. And he knows you better than you know yourself. His gifts are always better than anything that we could ask or imagine to even ask him for. He knows you. He sees you. So this season... When you see a baby, I want you to stop and I want you to ask yourself, am I receiving this gift? Have I received this gift of baby Jesus? And I'm about to pray for us. But as you're sitting there, when you close your eyes, what I want you to do, and this might seem a little bit silly, but go with me here. I want you to remember it. I want you to hold your hands out. And you can either hold your arms like this, like you're holding a baby, or if that's too much, just open your hands in your lap. Open your hands right now, wherever you are. Just make space to receive Jesus into your life. God, we thank you for the gift of your son. God, we thank you for the gift of yourself. And Lord, I pray as we go through this Christmas season, God, that we would be able to move out of the chaos, that we'd be able to move out of the overwhelm. God, we would even be able to step away from our to-do list and all of the things that we think we have to do to make Christmas special or magical. God, that we would just make room for you in our lives in this season because your presence is the gift. God, help us to receive baby Jesus. Help us to receive you just as you are with no conditions, no judgments, no expectations. God, if, we're, if we have received a different version of you or we think we've received you, God, but not really, we've kind of put you on a shelf or made you a checklist item, God, I pray that you would show us that. Help us to fully receive you this season. In your name we pray.